So we start with uh, an ATP database and we're going to add um, a table into it by inputting an Excel spreadsheet directly into the table. So we locate our Excel spreadsheet, we load it into SQL Developer, which parses it and then allows us to specify which table we want to populate. So we're going to create a new table in this case. And select the columns. Again, we can um, format them, define various aspects on them in each one of those wizard steps. And once we're done, we'll actually just import the data and create a table with some data in it. The next step for us would be to go over and REST enable this table using ORDS. So we're doing this in a schema um, that has already been uh, REST enabled. And now we can go to the specific table, right click on it. Okay, and over here we can see the data. And if we right click on the table itself in SQL Developer, we have the option to enable this uh, object um, through REST. So we're going to enable the object. Right now we're going to remove the security and we're going to give it a name for this specific REST endpoint. Of course, in real situation, you would want to keep the security in place to make sure that only people that are allowed to access the data can see it. Now you basically pick up the name of your server, ORDS, schema, and the name of the object you created, and you can get the data using a REST get call, like we see over here. Now we're ready to start building a new Visual Builder application. So we'll go into Visual Builder, create a new application. We can change the template to choose another look and feel, for example. And then we have our default application over here, and we're going into the services section to add a new service using an endpoint. Over here, we'll paste the URL to our ORDS enabled table. This is our get operation, and we are going to uh, give a specific name to the service, and we can test it to see the results that we get back. And as you can see, we have the details about an employee over here and we can copy the response to body, so we'll have the full definition of this specific endpoint. Now that we have the endpoint, we can go over and start designing our web application. So we'll just use the default page that was created for us by the template over here, and we're going to drop a table on the page. When we drop the table, we'll have an option to add the data uh, using the quick start. And over here, we'll be able to choose our REST endpoint for ORDS. We see the specific fields we have here. We can choose which fields we want to show here. In this case, those are the fields. We can switch one of them, for example, to show up as an image. We can reorder the fields, of course, to match whatever layout we want for our table. We need to find a primary key. We don't actually have one here, so we're going to use the email in this case and click finish and here we have the data from the table we just created showing up in our Visual Builder application. So that's the basics of how you get data using ORDS. Now let's go and cover some more advanced stuff. For example, what happens if you want to filter the data in the table? So maybe you want to have two fields up here at the top. One field would allow you to search by name. Okay and we'll add another numeric field next to it that will allow us to search by salary. Now, each one of those fields, we would hook it up to a variable that we will create in our Visual Builder application. So over here in the data, we're creating a new variable. The first one, we'll call it the name search, and we'll do a similar thing for the other field, hooking this one to a new variable, and this one would be the salary search field and we'll choose it as a number field. So now we have a place where we can insert our conditions, but in order for the table to actually filter it, um, the table is based on a service data provider variable. You can see it here in the data. So if you go into the variable, you'll be able to see here's our service data provider for the page. And it has something called filter criterion, which we can define. And we have now a nice declarative way to do it. Um, and using the query builder over here, we're going to add a condition. 
and for example make sure that we filter by name so make sure that the name uh, equals to the variable that we just created so that was called the name var name search variable so let's find it over here and that's our first condition let's add another condition this time checking that the salary is greater than the variable that we have created for the salary and then we can mark this as done and we can actually switch it to be an or condition between the two by matching any of the condition. So we define the filter criteria, but if you actually run the page, it won't work, it won't filter. Because what you need to do next is define a transform option on your service. So over here we have the transform tab. And when you check it, you'll get a sample transform, which is not specifically aimed at all services. In the blog that is linked from the comments of this video, you'll be able to find this transform function that does the correct transform of the query and also of sorting and pagination to the format that is expected by the old service. So you can see here we are just doing some of the operation. You can extend this to add other operation. Over here, you can see how we add the sorting functionality. And at the end, we also have the pagination part. So this is a simple JavaScript set of code that you can pick up and use as the base for your functionality. Now that we have the transform in place, if we'll go over and run our application, let's invoke here the inspector so we can see the network traffic that is being done. Now let's filter by name. So let's look for Chris, for example, as an employee. And you can see we get the information about Chris. If you look at the REST call that we executed here, and the parameters we passed, you can see that we passed a Q parameter in the format that ORD is expecting to get. Okay. Let's further filter this by providing a specific salary range. Um, so any employee that is either Chris or with a salary greater than 5,000. Okay. And we actually don't have employees with that high salary. So let's update this to a lower salary. Okay. And now we can get more employees. And you can see again, here's the request that we are sending with the two conditions on the query. And we're also limiting it to fetch 25 records at this point of time. So let's actually see how we can get pagination working in our page. So we'll pick up the table. And in the properties for the table, we can set the style to limit the height of the table. So let's put it at uh, 400 pixels, for example. Okay. And then let's just verify that our scroll policy attribute is set to load more on scroll, which is what we want. So now we should also be able to see um, pagination work. We're also going to enable sorting on a couple of the column. In this case, um, we just go over to the salary and to the name columns and just turn the sortable property to be enabled. All right, so let's rerun our application. And again, we still have the inspector open here. You can see we fetched the information. We also fetched a bunch of images of employees. Here's the first query that we did. We basically got 25 records from the offset of zero. If we scroll further down in the table, you would see we execute another REST call. This one fetches another 25 records from the offset of 25. So the next set of 25 records is being fetched. So pagination works. And when we click on the salary, we can also add the um, sort option to our query. So sort by um, basically just works out of the box because of our transform option. It's important to mention that you can, of course, add other endpoints to the same service. Um, we also enabled, for example, the post operation, which does the creation of a record. So it's going to be with the same name of the endpoint, but with a post operation, we're going to indicate that it's a create one, and it's going to accept some values. So we can actually copy the structure of an object here, because that would be the structure that we would expect to provide here. Okay, so we'll just put it here and then test our post endpoint and we can see record has been created. We can copy this into the result. And now let's see how we add this post operation and use it in our UI. So if we pick the table again, 
we can use the add create page wizard and we would have the post operation available for us here then we would see which fields we can provide here again we can choose all the fields here and then click finish and that's it we can now run our application okay we have the create button over here so let's click the create we go to the create page we're going to provide information here about a new employee and their salary email country and the picture and we can actually just copy a value of another picture and when we would click save we would execute the post operation on our uh, odds endpoint um, basically creating a record in our database okay so here's the url to the image click save we do a post operation and then we fetch the records again and we can do a search for the new record we just entered and here's the davis employee we just entered with the, all the details we needed